Mike McCool here with the Royal Examiner. I am at the Warren County Government Center. The room is packed. In fact, it's overpacked. The sheriff's not letting anyone else in the building. So we have a large number of people outside. So we want to give those people an opportunity to uh, make their presentation and their uh, support. I guess we're going to call it the support for the library. It, with me is Ivy. You are the first person we're going to let speak. So why don't you go ahead? I'm going to move behind the camera and we'll let you do yours. All right, great. I guess this is kind of a little bit different because I was going to preparing to speak in there, so All right. I'll read it ad hoc. All right. Uh, hello and good evening. I'm Ivy Van Patterson. I'm a volunteer at Samuels Public Library, and I'm tired. I'm tired of showing up to volunteer and witnessing the measure to sate the hate of 97 out of 20,461 about uh, patrons of Samuels Library. That's about 4%. And I see it, and let's call, let's call it what it is. It's segregation and the push of banning of books. The books mainly feature LGBTQ topics, although there are a few other ones. And that is, by all means, illegal under the Virginia Human Rights Acts of 2020. And they do this on the false claim of pornographic content in the kids' section. Again, illegal. This is a public library, it's a public institution, and the staff and the board of trustees cannot impose religious standards of pornographic or obscenity and must use the legal definition set out by the US Supreme Court in Miller v. California. A book must meet all three standards to be judged obscene, be without serious, literary, artistic, political, or scientific value, appeal to the pru prurient interest according to the community standards, and describe sexual conduct or excretory functions in an offensive way, Obviously, there are books within the former YA section, which is now the new adult section, which have emotionally and somewhat sexually mature topics in them, none of which can be defined as pornography, as it does not meet the official legal def designation, which is pictures and or writings of sexual activities intended to so solely to excite lascivious feelings at, of a particular blatant and aberrational kind. This is... I mention only in the adult and new adult, which was YA section, and I failed to mention youth, early reader, juvenile, and play area, because there are no books that have any sort of dangerous or what these people consider pornographic values. The thing they consider to be pornographic and their grievances are cited as two, gray, two gay granddads, and they say that's not a topic suitable for young readers, and that's just a reality. There are gay granddads in the world. And they also state that the LGBTQ agenda exists and they're trying to push it on the patrons, which again, doesn't exist. There's no paper out there or agenda having librarians saying, oh, you know, you gotta be gay. Um, one final thing is they've referred to LGBT folk as fetish and fetishizing. They said, and this is a direct quote, Fetishes such as the LGBTQ ideology, this is from one of their grievances which they cited, uh, these are both fallacies. This is factually false. A fetish is a form of sexual desire in which gratification is strongly linked to a particular object or activity or part of the body other than sexual organs. And an ideology is a system of ideas or ideals, especially one which forms the basis of economic or political theory. It is a complete logical fallacy to state that LGBTQ would be fetishistic or an ideology. That's it. Thank you. Okay, I proudly serve on the board of, of uh, Samuel's Public Library uh, for two reasons. One, it's a great library. Number two, it serves a community better than any library in the world. And number three, I'll add one, it's very efficient and very effective. We are a 501c3 organization, not-for-profit. We raise money. We have 8,000 hours of volunteer labor. You can't beat that. The county can't run it that cheap and we run it cheaper than anybody and better than anyone. So we're trying to work with the Board of Supervisors to get the library funded. And we're optimistic. We want them to fund it. We want to be partners with the Board of Supervisors. We're not their enemy, but we want to keep the books that should be kept. And we've made a number of accommodations in the library to make sure that we have the right books at the right place and that we serve the entire community, not just a portion of the community, but all of the community. So I'm very proud of this library. I'm all in with it and I hope we can work this thing out. Thank you. Okay, um, good afternoon. My name is Theo Wall. Um, I am a 16 year old high school student from Stephen City and I also happen to be a transgender male. 
I'm here to push against the defunding of the Samuels Library. This entire situation is incredibly ridiculous and dystopian. The opinions of a small Christo-fascist group are going to negatively affect the entire town if this library gets defunded. Libraries are an incredibly important part of any community and provide numerous resources for everyone in the surrounding area. I find it absolutely preposterous that the bigotry of a small few is going to lead to the detriment of the entire community. This group wants to isolate queer and trans individuals. They want us to feel absolutely alone and unrepresented in the world. Imagine all information about people like you is suppressed by the government. That, that is absolutely dystopian and cartoonishly evil. The suppression of information is the language of fascism. Libraries aren't going to turn your kids gay or trans. I knew I was trans before I read any literature that portrayed people like me. Because of this lack of resources, I felt incredibly isolated in my experience. This feeling of isolation leads to a community with some of the highest suicide rates in the world. That is not because we are in that, that is not because we are unhappy with ourselves, it is because we are unhappy with the way we are treated as political pawns. I am a person. I am not a pornographic figure that deserves to be banned from public visibility. So many of the books challenged here are completely harmless. For example, the book And Tango Makes Three is a non-fiction picture book about two penguins who adopt a baby penguin in the Central Park Zoo. Like I said, this book is non-fiction and it is about penguins. Is this what scares you? I shouldn't be surprised. The group trying to ban these books haven't even read the material that they're challenging. If these people are terrified of a summary of a book they haven't even read, how do you expect them to give you truthful and reliable information? All I'm asking is to look at what the majority is asking of you. Support your community, not a bigoted subcategory. The library is for everyone, not just Catholics. Don't let fascists run your town for you. Okay. Hi, Chrissy Colvin from the Happy Creek Voting District. Uh, I've considered drafting an email or speaking up at a meeting many times over the past few months, but I have to admit I've put it off again and again, and I feel the need to apologize for that. In my lack of communication, you may have gotten the idea that I support defunding a safe, prestigious public library. I'll be very honest with you and tell you that I haven't written before because I trusted you all. I trusted that you would understand that just because one group is louder doesn't mean they are the majority. I trusted that you would honor your duty to this town and the U.S. Constitution by following the law. I trusted that you would do your due diligence by researching these books and speaking with the staff at the library about the collection development policy as well as the ALA. I now know that that trust was misplaced. You see, I had an entirely different speech written for today and I was told the rules were changed and I would no longer be able to read for myself if I was not there already. I would like to ask you now, what do you want to be remembered for in this county? Is it shady practices and bigoted behavior? How do you want our county to look to the rest of the state? Small-minded and intolerant? Even the rest of the world? Perhaps a joke. What is the legacy you want for your children and grandchildren? I hope my children remember that I fought for freedom and equality. How are you going to answer to your constituents? Let me cut to the chase. You may win your elections this year. You may go on to even be a delegate for this great state. However, if you think no one is paying attention to what is happening, you're misinformed. We are watching you, we are waiting, and we will run against you in the future. There will be lawsuits that the County Board of Supervisors will not win because you are violating civil rights, civil liberties, and the Constitution of the United States. Who is going to pay for these lawsuits? Is that how you would spend my tax dollars? The reputation of this town is already tarnished with scandal. Don't add bigotry, intolerance, and defunding of a prestigious library to the Google searches for Warren County, Virginia. I hope you do the right thing for everyone and acknowledge that the library has already made concessions to please all the parties involved. Acknowledge them. Thank them for their continued professionalism during this very trying time and move on from this matter. Stand up to hate and let the county know there is no room for it here. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Kelly. Um here in Warren County. Uh, my family moved here in 2001, I think, or 2000, 2001. And at the time, we were looking forward to small town charm, uh, you know, er everything that Front Royal still has going for it. Awesome community of people. But in the 20 plus years that we've been here, 
we've I've witnessed and everyone else here is the largest case of fraud and embezzlement in the Commonwealth's history. And when that was happening with the EDA, there was a lack of integrity and honesty, lack of transparency, and lack of accountability. And it seems the the supervisors in there now are infected with it still. They keep the keep the tradition alive. Mr. Butler, um, he requested literally books to be removed. And then he goes up and tells every citizen here that he didn't say that. I don't know. Lack of integrity and honesty. Uh, Miss Cook and Miss Bu Mr. Butler, you guys were at that barbecue suggesting that the Safe Samuels group changes their wording from LGBTQ to pornography to make it less offensive. You know, two board, two board members. So that lack of transparency is missing too. Dolores, Dolores Oates, twenty thousand dollars to Tom Hennett, who has no. He's actually in here now. I'm surprised he's here. He's the man of mystery. Twenty thousand uh, dollars for a counseling fee for a primary election where she's. Hardly contested. She won 80 something percent of the vote. Way above any other uh, uh, counseling, you know, service. And, uh, he happens to be the head of this group, Clean Up Samuel. So there seems to be some accountability that needs to be there too. Hopefully the board can end it at any time and just say all the money's released and it'll be good. So let's hope. Do the right thing, board. Um, I have been, I moved here in 2016, but I've lived in Virginia since I was three. Um, I won't tell you how old I am now, but I probably am old, about the oldest one here. Um, I have been volunteering. I moved here in 2016 with my mother. Um, I needed to take care of her. And I've been volunteering at the library off and on since 2016, mostly with my dogs, therapy dogs that do painting and they do... Um, all kinds of other things and I did books with books and barks and all kinds of dog related activities for the library and I was amazed to find out what this library offers to the community I have never seen a library and I lived in in Fairfax Loudoun all of those bigger counties richer counties more diverse counties um, but I've never seen a library that offers as much to the community as this one does and the people work so hard. I have watched them. I've seen what they do. I've seen their fundraisers and I've helped them with their fundraisers. It just amazes me that anyone can start to attack these people um, just because of some type of secular issue that I don't know. I don't know what the issue is or if they just... When I went on their website today, I noticed that it said they really want to take it over. Um, and that just appalled me. So, I, you know, it breaks my heart for the, the, all the kids, breaks my heart for all the community, the library workers, it's just, it's unbelievable what's being done to them right now and the stress level that it's put them under. So I am hoping that the Board of Supervisors will listen to all the people here and to all the people that have stood up and spoken about this and do the right thing and release the funding. But I also want them to know that I haven't been a really stringent voter up to now, but I will be. Uh, I intend to be there at every single uh, election from now on. So thank you. Hello, I'm Melissa. Hi, I'm Lucas. Uh, we came here today, well I didn't know I was going to come here until about two hours ago, so I'm very excited to be here. Uh, but we came here today to stop the banning of books in our public library here in Front Royal, Virginia. I've been using the library since I was four. I've had Girl Scout meetings there for ages. The amount of books I've gotten from the library is uncountable. It is a place where many of my friends and family have gone to be a community. and we. It's one of the things I could never replace in the county. It's anytime I think of Front Royal, it's one of the few things that first pops to mind. Is that it's it's home. Uh, hi. Um, I didn't really think that I was going to be up here in front of the camera talking because I'm a little shy. 
Um, but as soon as I found out that they were going to be planning on basically ruining the community of Samuels, um, I decided to come up here. But the thing is, uh, for people who are going to watch this or read this, I want you to ask yourself something. What would you do if all your knowledge of one thing, one culture, one community was just completely caged away and locked up? You never knew that it existed. And then one day you met somebody or found something from this community or culture and you just you shut down because you don't know anything about it. So doing something to a community like this, especially with books, because books are one of the key things that people have to knowledge. It's been around since before Neanderthals existed uh, in different depictions of things. So doing that would basically be just shutting down everybody's brains, shutting down knowledge, and just not really something that like I didn't think anybody would want to be without because everybody needs to learn, everybody needs to grow. And in some of the words of the founding fathers of uh, the original 13 colonies, um, since a lot of people on the board now are conservative Christians or Catholics and they think that some of this stuff they should be pulling from the Bible. Um, look at the First Amendment. James Madison said that he did not want the government to be putting forth anything from one religion or favoring a religion and they didn't want anybody being pressed by a certain religion. And that was uh, suggested by Jefferson because he studied all religions and he accepted all religions for what they were. And moving forward backwards, we go to like John Locke and everybody over a hundred years before, they accepted everybody. So I think that if they want to keep the entirety of the United States and every single person inside of this country completely equal and keep everything constitutional, then they should be thinking like our founding fathers did. Uh, I like to just say, uh, because Virginia was last in all the states in uh, reading and the standards of learning, I don't think we should be banning books for kids to read. We should be encouraging these children, especially since they were last in the standards of learning and reading and mathematics. We don't have no time to decrease these kids' education. We should be increasing their knowledge, not decreasing it by banning books for them to read. And we should also acknowledge that we need to improve their skills with information. And they get information through reading and learning. And those skills are critical thinking. So I just want the board to know we need to increase this. We need to get these kids' grades up. I come from school in Maryland. Let's get this grades up here in this state. I don't like this. We need to do better. And we can do better. Hi, my name is Shelby Wetzel. Um, I've been a resident of Front Royal, Warren County my entire life. Um, I won't tell you how long that's been. Uh, I volunteered for Samuel's Public Library as a teenager from the time I was old enough to start volunteering, which was about 14 years old up until the day I left uh, Front Royal to go to college. Um, I'm not going to try to stand and talk about, you know, the politics and the money and all of that sort of thing because that's not my jurisdiction. I don't know much about that. But I do know that Samuel's Public Library was a safe place for me as a teenager. Um, it was a safe place for many teenagers that I worked with and volunteered with. Um, it's still a safe place for teenagers now. And not only for the teenagers, it's a place for adults when they need to cool down, people that don't have homes. Um, it's a place for people to go to get resources, who need to be able to find jobs, to find work, to better themselves. And you're trying to defund a place like that, that our county sorely needs if you want to take a look at some of the numbers of homeless poverty. As I said, I won't get too much into that. Um, right now, what we need to be looking at is how to help the community, not tear it apart. Right now, we've got two conflicting sides, and let's be real, one is a minority, and instead of listening to the voices of the town, we have a council who is not listening. I don't know, I tell my, uh, I work with young children, I tell them a lot, turn your listening ears on. That's what we need the council to do right now. You need to turn your listening ears on and hear us.
please do the right thing. Release the funds. Help the county instead of hurting it. Thank you. My name's John Cermak, and I live in Shenandoah Farms, 12 miles out. And I uh, bought the house here because some friends owned it, and I like the country. And I never realized we had such a jewel as Samuel's Library here until I came here. I have told my son in L.A., your libraries are nothing compared to this library. I was in there today getting books. It's a joy. Little children running around, families, people. Why would we want to take that away without having a negotiation about things that are offensive to those parents who uh, don't like what they see in the library? Well, don't let their child read it. The other thing I'd like to say is that I lived in other countries, one of which was Iran, and Iran was actually a very nice place to live. And look at it now. What we don't want, I don't care whether it's Catholic or Protestant or whatever, we don't want religious law telling you, I don't want to see that ankle or whatever, because it starts with little things and it grows. We need to watch for that. And I think that's all I have to say, but let's save the library. Uh, Joanna Artone. Um, in a recent report by Samuels, it showed that close to 20,000 people walked through their doors in a month's time. They hosted many programs and answered thousands of questions from patrons. The public library is essential to this community, from story times and programs for kids to notary services for adults. They provide free Wi-Fi and computers to those who may need it. It is a place that people can go to get out of the rain or snow or days like today where there's a heat advisory. You can print and copy things. You can check out a laptop or a mobile hotspot. With your library card, you have access to ebooks and multiple databases. Defunding means the community loses access to necessary services. Public libraries represent the public, and that means all members of the public. I assure you there are LGBTQ youth in this county. I would know because I was a closeted gay kid in this county. And those kids are watching you vote against their very existence. That is not protecting the kids. It is actively harming them. Queer youth deserve to see themselves represented in the literature at the public library. Children of queer parents should be able to see their family represented, and they should not be segregated to another section. I implore you to release the full funding of Samuels Public Library without removing books from the shelves. Show the world that the Warren County community standards are to be welcoming and accepting. You may just save a kid's life. Thank you. Uh, you can see the sentiment out here outside the outside the government center is support the library, release the money, and let's move on, and you know just so we can all get along. We appreciate that, and you'll have more on the video from the county. Uh, you'll see a lot more of the events that went on inside, and um, that's what we're going to do. And if anybody else has anything, we'll we'll turn the camera back on.